Hi there, it's Cassie at One Sweet Shop. I set myself up on the floor here today because I wanted to show you where I get all of my uh, cardboard inserts for making journals. So, and this is what they look like once I've taken them out of places. This is where I get the majority of my inserts. So that I can use them and make the, the, now I took and I sliced that one, but this is a binder. I got this actually from the free bin. So at uh, one of our local charities here. And what I do is I take this all apart. I'm actually sitting on the floor. I need a lot of room because I want to show you a tool I have that I use for cutting it afterwards. And look at that beautiful piece of board that you get out of there and lots of times you can get these these binders fairly cheap I like to cut on this side because this side is rounded so I just take and I nick this side because 10 to 1 I'm going to be cutting off the rounded edge and I'll be keeping the square edges and then I flip that up take this pull it out and there I've got another piece and then this is just scrap and a lot of times these are damaged. And that's why uh, places get rid of them. Like even schools, they get rid of them once they're damaged. And or the kids have written all over them or whatever. But this is a way of it, recycling them. You know, a lot of times they don't close anymore. Like the rings are gone on them. This one's a little bit thinner, but I could still use it on a soft book. Lots of them are, are uh, stiff. And lots of them are thin. There's another piece. And I just get rid of the cover after that. Once I take it out of here, a lot of these I pre-cut just to make this a little faster. I didn't want to have a 10-hour video on pulling out book board. But see there, like this piece is kind of damaged here, but I will just cut that off and I'll make it straight and I'll use this side instead. Just so that I have something that's fairly straight and not bent and lots of times that's why these these binders are donated is because they're bent like that and I lucked out a lot of these ones here were the ones that are just loose 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 board inside but I'm going to show you another kind that sometimes and you really have to be picky when you're looking for binders if you see rippling or looseness in here then you know that it's one that you can use if you have um, where it looks like it's, um, I'll pull one out here right away. I'll cut this one and then I'll pull another one out. I want to show you something because it's a binder that you probably, well, you could use it and I have used it, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's a lot of trouble to get out of the, off the vinyl. So, so me, I just kind of whip through these and I strip them down. I get myself a fairly nice pile of what I need to use. And uh, then I start to worry about making the books afterwards. And I just kind of stockpile this, you know, I'll have a pile that'll be a foot high or something. I know that I've got enough for probably 30 or 40 journals. So, and I just cut through these. It's a little bit difficult. I'm sitting here on my knees, but that's okay. It's just, I didn't I didn't have room on my desk to put everything up and I wanna show you a, um, a big tool I have and you'll be surprised at what I use to cut these because I know I see a lot of people taking X-Acto knives and they're cutting everything up into pieces and it's like, you know, you're doing three or four rows of it to cut them off. And it's so hard. So I just, I'm just manhandling these things. <laughs> but I get them off fairly fast. I don't want to use my whole day to cut binder board. I sure hope you're getting this on the video. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, maybe I should zoom out. Let me zoom out a little bit. There we go. Sorry that I'm like sitting on my knees here. But whatever. I'm doing what I have to do, right? We all do what we have to do. We don't all have wonderful studios to take pictures in. So, you know, we're normal people. 
but uh, there's another piece. This one's a really stiff one, so that's going to be wonderful. Now, with these ones with this like this, I'm going to show you what I do with that because I can't get through those rivets, so cut through the rivets, and I'm not going to score it a million times to get through there. But I will show you what I'm going to do, and it'll be a lot faster. Oh, and this one's another one. There's rivets there. I can't do that, so I'll go do the front instead. I'll go work on the front one. I'll take the front one apart. Whoops. i got to go through two layers here. might even use that clear plastic that's on here. It might be something good for me to use. That might be okay. There's a piece there, and I'm going to have to cut this off before I can get that out. I've got one more here to do, and then I'm going to show you a different type of binder that I find doesn't work very well. Just wanted to show you what it looks like. There's another one. And see how this looks kind of loose in here you, when you wrinkle it with your finger? You can tell that that box board inside is probably loose floating in there and it's not glued. The only thing that holds it are these seams that are on this outside edge. That's the seams. You see, it just pops right out. I wish I could find a use for those rings. I might eventually find something where I can maybe make a little template book or something. I don't know. They're pretty long though, so I kind of leave them. Anyway, now this is another type of binder, and I didn't realize this when I was getting binders. But you see how this doesn't move? I'm going to show you something inside this one. This one here, it, they've glued it to the vinyl. And if you really want to work at it, yes, you can take it off. But you're going to have this rough edge right here, and some of the some of the paper wrap is going to be stuck to it. So these, I choose not to use these. They're just too much work. It would take me too much work to use them. Now I'm going to show you what I do to get my book, my book templates. Say I want, look at all the, from just those binders there, look at all I got. I got enough to make lots of books. Now this is my 12 by 12 scoring thing here. And I know that probably my book is going to be six inches. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to mark it on the six inch spot. And then this one, I'm going to mark it on the six inch spot. And I'm going to do the same with this, this next one. This is just a really quick method of getting your books prepared. And it doesn't take no time at all. And I'm going to show you what I use. Uh, hang on, what did I do here? Oh, I marked it on five. Oh, here, six. No, I marked it on six here. <laughs> Okay, hang on. There we go. I flipped it the wrong way. Oh, well. So it happens. Okay, that one there. And then let's say, let's say this one here. I'm marking it six inches. And I'm marking it six inches. Now I know that when I cut down there, because I've gone with this score line, I know that I'm going to have six inches there. So this one's a little bit curved on the edge, but it's not bad. So that's about all I use with this for. Now I'm going to show you, and I have to reach across here. I'm going to show you what I use when I cut them. Because I really, sorry for bumping you. I really do cheat a lot. <laughs> I cheat. This is called a laminate cutter. This is made for laminate flooring. Okay. And this one's defective. I have to open it up. This one's defective. You see the handle go... Oh yeah, the handle's going to go wild here. Let me hold it here. Um, this one was defective, and it has a, an angle to its cut, so it was kind of being gotten rid of because a business couldn't use it because it was, it was not working properly. So I have these all, mic uh, all these marked now, but I can use that straight edge of this cutter here in order to cut my, my box board so that I don't have to and I just mark up my lines here, press down, and I've got my, there's my book template already. I have the right size that I need. And I'll do this for each and every one of my um, pieces of board that I had cut. Cut it off. The small ones can be used for something else. This gives me these. Lots of times I'll match them up. Say I want this one to be, um, 
Oh, how long? Oh, I should have measured one of my books. Well, anyway, even if I waste one, I waste one, right? Okay, say eight, say eight inches, say six by eight, okay? Six by eight. But what I can now do is, that's a curve, and that's a, you know, I think I wanna mark it on this edge. I wanna cut off the curve. Hang on, let's do that again. Let's cut the curve off. Eight inches, if I follow the line, I know I'm gonna be at eight inches again. So, take that, stick that one in. I wanna make sure they're lined up because I have them doubled now, see? But I'm gonna get them both the exact size that I need. So, I'm gonna line them up on the line and then <clears throat> cut it off. And I have my two pieces that I need for my front and back. And then lots of times I will take this one because it's the exact thickness of these and I will cut my strip for the spine, depending on the spine size that I want. This one's really big. If I was making a huge journal, well, this would be great for it, but that's way too big for me. I don't usually go that big. I probably take this one, I'll cut it in half. So I'll mark it here. This is gonna be, say I need a two inch spine. So I'll mark it at two inches here, and I'll mark it at two inches here. And I'll flip that one in there, and I'll line up those lines. Hope my head is not in the, in the thing. I'll line up those lines, and I'll push down. And there's my, there's my spine that I want. And that's gonna be for my piece here. So that is how I cheat. If you all have husbands who have done flooring, you know what you can do, right? <laughs> Just go steal his tools. Which side has marks? Okay, let's do this one. This one, I patted them together so they line up. I'm gonna do double at once. And I do, I do, this, do this quite a bit. I actually double it up. Let me move that in a little bit. There we go. There we go. And there's another. There's going to be another set right away. And this is going to be a little bit wide. What happens is I end up getting two out of these or whatever. So this will be a little bit wide. Now I can cut three at a time even. Uh, that's why I love this tool. This tool is made to cut heavy duty. And I just love that. I love that it's made. So what I'm doing is when I flip it this side, I'm marking it 10 inches because I know this is 12 inches across. And on this side, I'm marking it two inches. So I know I've got two inches somewhere here on either side. And I'm gonna match up those little lines and you can't see underneath here, but I can. I can see where the blade is. And you know, watch your fingers, right? Because that's not the one I'm using. I'm using this one. Two inches. Yeah. So then when I want to cut my size, say I want an eight inch, an eight inch book. Sometimes there's seven. Eight inches would be along there. I'm gonna move this down a little bit and mark it there. I can trim as much as I want. Um, as I want to, right? Like, if I have to trim this down, I just whip it through the machine again and I trim it down to the right size. And I'll do like, you know, 30, 40 of these at a time so that I have 40 sets of book templates just all ready to go. And that one's ready to go now. All I need to do is add my fabric, uh, pre-punch my holes, I usually pre-punch the holes where I'm gonna sew. In here, I mark them up on a two inch template. Pre-punch my holes if I'm gonna have two signatures or three signatures or whatever. And um, then when I cover it with fabric, I can feel those holes and I can sew into them when I'm sewing. So, and I'll use the same template on the paper also. So those of us who made a lot of books, we kind of know what that's all about, especially with the board that's like this. This board is fairly stiff, 
Now this one here, I've already cut that, but I didn't cut my spine. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna cut my spine. And see how I have a little ridge right here and I'm just gonna trim and shave that off. Maybe I'll sand it off. But um, that's why this cutter was a, it was kind of a defect cutter. And because if you're doing flooring, you'd be fired, you know. You can't make flooring that's crooked, so. But there we go, there's the spine for that one, there's the spine for that one. And I still have all of this that I can make. And you know, if I make my books just a little bit smaller, I could actually get the whole book out of this. Like if I was making smaller journals, I could get the front, the back, and the spine from this side here. So that's just a cheapy method of, you know, not having to spend, what, $7.99? Or I don't even know how much they are because I just don't buy them. The ones that are pre-cut, pre-made, you know, the little squares? I do have some that are in packages. I think they came from Lewis Craft or Michael's a long time ago. I think it was Lewis Craft. And um, I think they were $9.99 to get a, a set for, for making a scrapbook or a journal or something like that. And I, I can't afford to pay that, so... But anyway, this is, uh, these are my little handy dandy tools. So this thing is like my best friend. I have probably cut hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books on these. But do you see these ones? Remember these ones that had the rivets in it? Well, it doesn't really matter. Like, it matters that there's rivets in it, but you know what I'll do? I just take and I cut it off because I can't use the part with the rivets. And you know what? It is too hard to cut that by hand. So I'll just go against the spine here and I'll cut them off like that. And then I can just pull out this piece here and pull it out from the back. Oh, it might be easier just to cut it. Usually they slide out, but sometimes they're pretty tight. But there, I cut the rivets off and it's given me another piece to use. So let's get inventive people when we're, let's recycle as much as we can and uh, use up things that are just going into the landfill. So, and you know, if I could find a place to use that vinyl, I'd be using that too. So I may save a couple pieces, it's colored. Maybe I'll make some book covers out of it. I don't know. I haven't quite decided yet what I'll use all the vinyl for. So, but I will save pieces of it for sure. Maybe I can sew through it. So anyway, you have yourself a wonderful day and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.